we've come to this windswept corner of Denmark to ask a question. What can one Danish art dealer... My favorite is that one. One Danish farmer... Too, too good to tear down. ...and two pigs... <laughs> ...tell us about how Denmark became the world leader in renewable wind power. But first, think back to the OPEC oil embargo of the late 1970s. And at that time, we realized as a society that if you don't change our habit of being dependent on foreign oil, uh, then we will have a major problem in our economy as we go forward. So the Danish government began taxing oil and subsidizing alternative energy like wind. Over the next 30 years, in assembly plants like this one, outside the town of Rutgebing, the Danish company Vestas grew from a handful of friends to the largest windmill company in the world, creating 30,000 new jobs. Welders, machinists, painters, and programmers. To get a sense of just how heady these times are for Vestas, we went straight to the top. It's a beautiful view from here. Oli Engard, married, father of two, used to be a Volkswagen mechanic. For my own part, I can tell it's a wonderful job uh, with a lot of fresh air. And Oli and his partner Hans <laughs> are not working on just any windmill, but the one at the Copenhagen Convention Center, the one that will power the entire global climate change summit by itself. Now you know you have to get that windmill fixed by the time they have the international conference here. Yeah, that's no problem. But the story of what Denmark has done with its wind is not one story of a giant corporation or government incentives. It's many stories, and most of them begin and end with people. I think it was too, too good to tear down. Remember the farmer? Well, years ago, a group of men approached Henning Dahl to lease his land for a windmill. Said the wind was good. That wasn't really true. It was great. <laughs> Henning borrowed and invested a million dollars and put the mill up himself. Here's the ladder. Henning's only climbed to the top three times. In fact, he rarely visits his mill. The wind speed is here. Because he tracks its success on the web. Everything from daily wind speed and direction to oil pressure and profit. I, I didn't think I was really smart, but I just saw that there was a possibility of making some money. How much money? Well, he paid off his $1 million investment in three years. And you don't have to water it? No. Or fertilize? Just wait for it. <laughs> Standing on Henning's farm, you can learn one of the most important things about how Denmark came to lead the world in wind power. So there's no big corporation that owns any of these? No. The mill right behind Henning's is owned by a married the couple. One the one right behind by, uh, that, by the goodness of disabled people. It's a little family. Yeah. As the caretaker explained, it's a home for developmentally disabled adults. Like Heinrich here, who raised sheep and the two pigs we mentioned. They sell organic produce to their neighbors and live lives largely funded by the profits from their windmill. And the four generators you see in the uh, horizon. And the four on the horizon? Well, that's where the art dealer comes in. So it was a kind of uh, protest uh, when we started. Back in the early 80s, Hans Madsen had long hair and was carrying a protest sign. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Signs that said ban the nukes in Danish. <laughs> Yes, we were a little against that. The government wanted to build a nuclear power plant here on that windswept coastline we told you about. Hans and his neighbors stopped it. They formed an association, raised money, and built windmills instead, nine of them. Hans is the association chairman. And as chairman of this consortium now, how much is your salary? I don't, I don't get any salary. Nothing? No, never. It's all volunteers? It's all volunteers, yes. That's uh, the idea of it. 476 friends, neighbors, investors, all earning 12% per year on an investment for 30 years. Okay, it's good. It's good. It's good. And what's the name of this cooperative? Sydvest Sjælands Vindmøllelav. Sydvest Sjælands Vindmøllelav. Yeah. Let's just call it SSV. Very good. So what began as government policy became a world-leading industry, driven as much by everyday Danish people as by the unlimited power 
directly over their heads. This is me. Let's go. In Klintebu, Denmark, John Larson for World Focus.